message to the church in Pergamum. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore, repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. The message to the church in Pergamum reveals a church cohabiting amidst a wicked, immoral society. Jesus, however, commends them for not denying their faith. However, some individuals within the church allowed the teachings of Balaam, a compromised prophet from the Old Testament, to influence them into practicing these wicked deeds. These deeds included idolatry and sexual immorality. Additionally, they adhered to the teachings of the Nicolaitans, which I believe represent a form of clerical overreach or control. Jesus warned that if they did not repent, he would wage war against them with the sword of his mouth, a term used in Revelation 19 when he in his wrath physically comes down to destroy the armies and nations of the earth. The armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As you can see, this is a serious warning. This is another example of having some things right and other things wrong, but there are still serious consequences. So finally, Jesus says to the one who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. Jesus referred to himself as the bread of life in John 6, 48 through 51, linking himself to the manna that sustained the Israelites. In ancient Greek and Roman culture, white stones were sometimes given to the winners of athletic contests. They served as a token of victory and could be used as an admission ticket to a special feast or event. In the context of Revelation, the white stone possibly symbolizes the believer's victory through Christ and the invitation to heaven and eternal life. In the judicial system of the time, jurors would cast a white stone to signify acquittal and a black stone for condemnation. The white stone in Revelation could also symbolize the believer's acquittal from sin and judgment representing their acceptance and righteousness before God. So, in conclusion, the white stone with a new name represents the recognition that believers will receive from Christ for their faithfulness. It symbolizes victory, acquittal, and a new life. The imagery also conveys the idea of intimate fellowship with God and the assurance of eternal life.